Uh, today is December 29th, 2023. This is the last weekly paper summary, whatever roundup of the year, I guess. Um, I should probably do like a yearly review or something, but I'm not going to do that. Sounds annoying. Um, instead, just usual video. As always, I have downloaded a bunch of AI papers off of Archive, and I have had a GPT summary of those papers up and running here. Um, along with the summaries, we've got prereq knowledge you should know before reading the paper if you want to, and citations that are probably incorrect. Before we get to the actual main list, though, there was one that I think I left somewhere and didn't get summarized. That um, I think Patrick's in this new maybe, I'm not going to remember. Rest meets React, self-improvement from multi-step reasoning LLM agents. Uh, answering complex natural language questions often necessitates multi-step reasoning, integrating external information. Several systems have combined re knowledge retrieval with LLMs to answer such questions. These systems suffer from various failure cases, and we cannot directly train them end-to-end -to, -end to fix such failures. The interaction with external knowledge is non-differentiable. To address these deficiencies, we define React-style LLM agent with the ability to reason and act upon external knowledge. We further refine the agent through a REST-like method that iteratively trains on previous trajectories, employing growing batch reinforcement learning with AI feedback for continuous self-improvement and self-distillation, starting from a prompted large model. And after just two iterations of the algorithm, we can produce a fine-tuned small model that achieves comparable performance on challenging compositional question answering benchmarks with two orders of magnitude fewer parameters. Love this stuff. Um, I'm just waiting for seriously smart models that are on my phone. I'm just waiting for a whole on six, nine months, a year from now for a, a personal entire company to execute my ideas. We'll see how that goes. I'm not going to read this one. Cool stuff. Thank you, Patrick. Okay. Tiny GPTV, efficient multimodal large language model via small backbones. Impressive performance, significantly less computational resources. Uh, pre-trained vision models, or it combines efficient language model backbone of Phi 2 with pre-trained vision models from Blip 2 or Clip, has 2.8 billion parameters and can be quantized for deployment on devices with limited resources, um, achieves comparable performance to larger, example, 13 or 7 billion parameter models in visual language tasks. Cool, whatever. <clears throat> Theory of hallucinations based on equivariance. You know, hypothesis that insufficient acquisition of equivariance in language models can lead to hallucinations. Equivariance refers to the consistent interpretation of sequences or phrases with the same meaning, regardless of variations in their token level expression. Suggests that language models trained on small data sets may misinterpret input text or generate incorrect text, aka hallucinations, due to a lack of equivariance. To test this, they develop a toy model called Dancing Men, which is a character level substitution cipher, uh, proposes a novel technique based on the T5 model to efficiently decipher these codes without relying on frequency analysis, able to mo almost completely solve the cipher, demonstrating its ability to acquire equivariance in this context. Um, I don't like the sound of that, um, but I am going to eventually, in the comprehension creativity paper talk about hallucination so maybe it's useful I don't know we'll add it the economics of human oversight how norms and incentives affect costs and performance of AI workers so it does specifically data annotation, uh, which involves human workers labeling images or annotating text to improve the performance of quality of AI models. Efficiency of human oversight work is crucial for AI developers as it directly impacts the quality of AI models trained on annotated data. Um, I, there's a whole bunch of moral stuff with data annotators right now and how they're getting through like basically slave labor and getting all messed up psychologically from terrible data that they have to see and stuff like this. Unfortunate. Um, my hope is that uh, as we get like... GPT-4 level systems being more common that will just no longer need need these in general. Um, actually, no, that's that's language. That doesn't make any sense. My real hope is that uh, we can get a decentralized data um, contribution system up and going that I'm working on right now. 
explores the impact of norm design, aka rules versus standards, and monetary incentives on data quality and costs in data annotation. Conduct an experimental study involving data annotators who are randomly assigned to different groups with varying task instructions and monetary incentives. Results show that annotators provided with clear rules perform significantly better in terms of accuracy compared to those with vague standards. Those who received an additional monetary incentive also performed better with the highest accuracy rate observed in the working group with a group working with both clear rules and incentives. Both groups requiring more to required more time to complete tasks compared to those working with standards and no incentives. Um, findings highlight trade-off between data quality and efficiency in data annotation. Whatever. Rethinking tabular data understanding with large language models. Investigate ability of LLMs to understand and reason over tabular data. Explore three key aspects. Robustness um, of them to structural perturbations in tables, comparison of textual and symbolic reasoning on tables, potential of aggregating multiple reasoning pathways to improve model performance. Find the LLM struggle with structural variations in tables, particularly in symbolic reasoning tasks. Propose a table structure normalization method called norm to enhance LLM's resilience against structural variations. Consists of two stages, content-aware transposition determination and row recording, row reordering. Results show that applying norm improves LLM's performance on table QA tasks, mitigating the impact on structural perturbations. All right, um, cool, whatever. Power infer fast large language model serving w with a consumer grade GPU. I think this is also from Patrick. Could be wrong though, maybe from Stereoplegic. Uh, introduce power infer a high speed large language model inference engine designed for personal computers equipped with consumer grade GPUs. Key idea is to exploit the high locality inherent in LLM inference characterized by a power law distribution and neuron activation. Means that a small subset of neurons called hot neurons are consistently activated across inputs, while the majority called cold neurons vary based on specific inputs. Power Infer leverages this insight to design a GPU CPU hybrid inference engine. Uh, hot activated neurons are preloaded onto the GPU for fast access, while cold activated neurons are computed on the CPU, reducing GPU memory demands and GP CPU GPU data transfers. To optimize the efficiency of neuron activation and computational sparsity, it investigates the adaptive predictors and neuron-aware sparse operators. So it's like an interesting way to do MOE, where instead of choosing separate, like, like gating functions having separate models, you're choosing it to like um, uh, allow for expansions of the matrices or something. I'm not sure. I don't know. It sounds kind of cool. Um, it sounds like it's still task-dependent. You have to know what task is happening, though, which I don't love. Adaptive predictors are used to accurately predict which neurons will be activated during runtime. I don't know why I'll have to actually say anything about this, but sounds cool maybe. I don't know. On the use of metaphor translation in psychiatry. Challenges faced in providing mental health care to individuals with limited English proficiency and highlights the importance of metaphor translation in psychiatry. Emphasize that metaphor is a crucial tool for individuals to express and understand their mental health experiences. However, English speaking healthcare providers often struggle to, comp to comprehend the figurative language but used by LEP patients, leading to inequitable care. Sports potential of machine translation and addressing this issue presents the concept of asynchronous telepsychiatry as a promising solution. Involves recording and translating a patient's responses to a clinical questions, allowing psychiatrists to evaluate and prescribe treatment remotely. Cites a study that demonstrates the effectiveness of ATB in increasing expressive freedom of LEP patients and improving the quality of mental health care. Discusses the role of metaphor mental health management, um, shown to be a powerful tool for individuals with depression to communicate their experiences and for therapists to understand and help them. Metaphor is just big with all understanding, with all knowledge, all language, all um, learning. Presents studies. Okay, whatever. Sounds cool. Leveraging the Urison lemma of topology for an enhanced binary classifier. Started getting into topology about like six, nine months ago. Didn't finish a textbook, but goddamn. Core assertion is that this lemma can be leveraged to enhance binary classification algorithms. It states that in a normal space, any two disjoint closed subsets. Disjoint closed subsets, okay, can be separated by disjoint open sets. Separated by disjoint open sets, okay. Propose a novel binary classifier called whatever the hell that incorporates this lemma to construct separating functions and improve classification accuracy. Cool. Large language model for causal decision making. I feel like I've had this one like downloaded multiple times now. 
proposed LLM for causal, a large language model that is fine-tuned to perform causal decision-making tasks, aimed to address limitations of existing language models and understanding and reasoning about causal concepts, consists of three major steps. Amazon, who cares about y'all? Three major steps, user request interpretation, causal tools assignments, and execution and output interpretation. I'm really more of a more of a believer in just like a crazy smart model, a crazy big smart model that we just do some good problem engineering with than I am about like these models that are fine-tuned on these specific, not RLHF, but like effectively um, specific instruction, instruction tuning data sets. I'm not too fond of these. To train it, we generate synthetic data using a data generation pipeline that ensures data variety and accuracy. We also collect two benchmark data sets to have performance of it. Okay, whatever. Hidden minima in two-layer ReLU networks. Phenomenon of hidden minima, which are neural networks, blah, 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 blah. Hidden minima are local minima of the optimization problem associated with training these networks that are not detected by standard optimization methods. Not detected by standard optimization methods, meaning that like the standard optimization methods don't actually reach these local minima. They're hidden, like they're never going to get touched because they're, what are they like? The hole is too small, I guess? I don't understand. And like... Isn't, aren't local minima not even an issue in high dimensions? Isn't that a thing we already learned that it's all saddle points? I'm confused. Focus on studying the properties of hidden minima by analyzing curves along which the loss function is minimized or maximized called tangency arcs. Use techniques from group theory and representation theory to study the symmetry structure of the loss function and its tangency arcs. Show that the tangency arcs inherit the symmetry of the loss function. And they provide a precise description of all possible structures and symmetries of tangency arcs. Also compute the Hessian spectrum of the loss function. <clears throat> Don't think I care. Not very big on pure, pure theory um, when it comes to this stuff. I think we're very wandering in the dark. Generative AI for math, part one. Math pile, a billion token scale pre-training corpus for math. A uh, large scale math centric corpus comprising approximately 9.5 billion tokens. Oh, wow. Goal of creating this corpus is to enhance mathematical reasoning abilities of language models, emphasize the importance of data quality over quantity, and have meticulously collected and processed data from various sources to ensure high quality of the corpus. Key features include its math-centric nature, diversity, and high quality. Unlike previous pre-training corpora, math positively focuses on the mathematical domain, providing a valuable resource for training language models and mathematical reasoning. Corpus is diverse, incorporating content from textbooks, lecture notes, academic papers from arch archive, Stack Exchange, Proof Wiki, and Wikipedia. Take an extensive measure to ensure the high quality of the corpus, including pre-processing, pre-filtering, cleaning, filtering, and deduplication. Perform data contamination detection. To make a model on it. Is there a model? Importance of the data documentation and transparency. Provide a data set sheet from MathPal documenting the characteristics of the data. Um, so they didn't build anything off of it? And to contribute to blah, 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 blah. I'd like to know if there's a baseline model to look at how well it did or anything, but whatever. Um, I'm going to add this. I th it'd be cool to train if it's not too if it's not too big or whatever, train my upcoming model on this. Um, where What's it called? Generative AI for math. It's a potential data source to use in my tiny test model of my alternative to next token prediction. Federated learning via input-output collaborative distillation. New federated learning framework called FED-IOD that conducts collaborative distillation on both the input and output space. Goal is to train a centralized model without sharing individually held private data. Proposed framework eliminates need for recursive local parameter exchange or auxiliary task relevant data, giving direct privacy control to local users. Key idea is to exploit the input and output space to transfer knowledge from locally trained models to the central model. In the input space, a generator model is trained to generate input samples on which local models achieve consensus on semantic clarity. This ensures the input data is viable for knowledge transfer. Additionally, the input samples are designed to produce diverse predictions from each local model, allowing the input data to leverage the unique expertise of each local node. In the output space, the central node model is trained to mimic the ensemble of local models' outputs. Importance, the importance weight of each local model's prediction is calculated based on the data distribution of the local node. 
allows the central model to effectively transfer knowledge in the local models while considering the heterogeneity of the data distribution. Kind of cool. I'd like to eventually get into federated learning stuff, but it's going to be a while, I think. Um, probably at least six months, if not longer, um, before I can really dive deep into that stuff. Federated Continual Learning via Knowledge Fusion, a survey. Present a comprehensive survey on federated continual learning, which is blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. Um, same reasons. Where is this? Fair Compass, Operationalizing Fairness in Machine Learning. New approach, address lack of practical implementation of fairness solutions in real-world applications. Fair Compass is a mixed visual analytics system that combines technical, non-technical, and visual analytics solutions to fairness, auditing, and machine learning classifiers. I don't actually know why I download this at all. I don't care. Exploiting novel GPT-4 APIs. What does that mean? Explore the security vulnerabilities introduced by three new functionalities in the GPT-4 API, fine-tuning, function calling, and knowledge retrieval. Find that these functionalities can be exploited to enable harmful behaviors and attacks. First, we investigate the fine-tuning API and show that fine-tuning on as few as 15 harmful examples or 100 benign examples can remove core safeguards from GPT-4. This allows the model to respond to harmful requests, such as providing detailed instructions on how to build a bomb or generating targeted misinformation about a specific public figure. We also find that even benign data sets can increase the harmfulness of the model, highlighting the importance of carefully curating the fine-tuning data set to avoid unintended harmful behavior. Question, um, when we're fine-tuning this stuff, when OpenAI is, are they actually doing a fine-tune, like an actual last layer edit, or are they just doing a LoRa? I would think they're just doing a LoRa. Um, and are LoRa's as, um, uh, as vulnerable to this as regular fine-tuning? I would assume regular fine-tuning is more vulnerable, but like not necessarily. Um, I don't know, interesting stuff. It's, I wonder if you're supposed to, like, if um, OpenAI should start taking your fine-tuning data and mixing in their regular RLHF data. I don't know. Encoding categorical data, is there yet anything hotter than one hot encoding? Explore the effects of different encoding schemes on the performance of machine learning models. Use an exhaustive sample of binary and multi-class classification problems from the OpenML repository, totaling 83 datasets. Encoding schemes that compared included target agnostic approaches, label encoding, one-hot encoding, and Helmert contrast encoding, and target-based approaches, like target encoding and weight of evidence encoding. I don't know what that means. Fitted um, some thing to each data set and collected model performance metrics, training, and for installations and feature importances. Use linear mixed effects models to analyze the data treating task ideas random effect. Main findings in multi-class tasks, one hot encoding and Helmert contrast coding outperform target based encoders. In terms of predicted power, this suggests that traditional target agnostic encoding schemes are more effective. In binary tasks, there were no significant differences between in performance across the encoding schemes. One hot encoding showed a marginally positive effect on the outcome. One hot just nice because it forces everything else to be zero is the thing. It decreases the odds of everything else, which isn't always what you actually want, but it's usually what you want given the um, number of categories that could possibly be an okay label versus the huge number that definitely are not. Don't believe everything you read, enhancing summarization interpretability through automatic identification of hallucinations and LLMs. Da, 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 da. To address hallucinations, propose a token level approach to identify different types of hallucinations and LMG and summaries, create an enhanced data set by annotating the SAM sum data set with token level tags indicating the presence of hallucination and specific type of error. This data set allows for more detailed analysis of hallucination patterns and behavior in LLMs. Train a prior I don't care what's happening here, I don't know, I don't care. Do androids know they're only dreaming of electric sheep? Investigate the phenomenon of hallucination, specifically the context of ground degeneration tasks. Propose the use of probes, which are classified blah, 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 um, to detect hallucinations during the generation process. Create a data set of hallucinations in three ground degeneration tasks. Abstractive summarization, knowledge ground and dialogue generation, and data to text generation. 
That is, that includes both organic hallucinations generated by language model and synthetic hallucinations created by editing reference inputs or outputs. Authors train probes on the hidden states of the language model and evaluate the performance in detecting hallucinations. Find that probes trained on synthetic hallucinations are not effective in detecting organic hallucinations, that the saliency of hallucination information varies across layers, hidden state types, and tasks. Authors show that their probes outperform multiple baselines in hallucination detection, demonstrating the feasibility and efficiency of probing as an alternative to traditional evaluation methods. Results provide insights in the behavior of language models. I don't care. Cool title. We love some cool titles. Density Descent for Diversity Optimization proposes density descent search, an algorithm for diversity optimization that explores the feature space by leveraging continuous density estimates. DDS uses two density estimation methods, kernel density estimation and continuous normalization flows. Outperforms prior work on standard DL benchmarks, including novelty search and covariance matrix adaptation annealing. DDS with KDE provides a stronger stability guarantees than NS, making it more suitable for adaptive optimizers. NS is a special case. I don't care what's happening. I don't know. Results. Outperforms three out of four benchmarks. Performs well. I don't know what's happening here. I don't really care too much. Deep Definetti. Recovering topic distributions from large language models. Investigates the extent of which LLMs capture the latent topic structure of documents. Propose that LLMs implicitly perform Bayesian inference on the latent topic distribution underlying the data. Connect this hypothesis to Finetti's theorem, which states that exchangeable probability distributions can be represented as a mixture with respect to a latent generating distribution. Although text is not exchangeable at the level of syntax, others argue that it is a reasonable assumption for topic structure. I don't care. I know what's happening here. Communication constraint hypothesis testing, optimality, robustness, and reverse data processing inequalities. Problem hypothesis testing under communication constraints where each sample is colonized before being revealed to a statistician. Study both statistical and, comp and computational aspects of the problem. Begins by considering the simple binary hypothesis testing problem where the goal is to identify one of two distribution based on a set of samples. Show the example complexity of binary hypotheses testing under communication constraints. I don't care. Approximation algorithms for preference aggregation using CP nets. Problem of aggregating preferences over combinatorial domains using conditional preference networks as a representational model. Goal is to find a consensus CP net that represents the best collective outcome or ranking based on the set of individual CP nets. Introduce an objective function that counts the number of swaps, aka okay, pairs of outcomes at different single attributes that are ordered differently by the consensus CP. I'm kind of curious about aggregating preferences. I don't know. About I don't know what's happening here, but I'm going to download it. A survey of reinforcement learning from human feedback. Where is this out of? LM Munich, Duke, whatever. Comprehensive overview of RLHF. The, uh, da, da, da. That's whatever. I'm going to download it. It might be a quick little easy video to make. I need to get back to making videos once I've actually got some stuff done. I've been so unproductive lately. All right, that is it for today. Check out these summaries and a little newsletter over on my Substack. Please like, subscribe, all the YouTube things, and um, in the Discord if you want to discuss stuff. But uh, yeah, see ya.